true exclusive game, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, can only be played on a Nintendo system, the GameCube. Now I know what you're saying, emulation, but I don't count emulation as taking away from exclusivity. Heck, I don't even count PC games or games that go to the PC as not being exclusive. If they appear on a platform like a console, and they don't appear on another console like the Xbox or a PlayStation or a PlayStation or an Xbox, then to me, it's a console exclusive because like many console gamers, the PC just doesn't enter into the factor for me. I know some of you right now want to reach through the screen and shake me, but trust me, it's not that big a deal. We're going to talk about games that are exclusive, but aren't exclusive, but feel like they're exclusive. What am I even talking about? Well, I wanted to start off with The Wind Waker because to me and to many other people, this is a true exclusive. It's on the GameCube. It's not on a PlayStation. It's not on an Xbox. You can kind of sort of play it on PC. But again, I want to stress the PC doesn't enter into the realm of discussion here because as one of those peasant console players, I just associate games with consoles. So The Wind Waker is a great example of an exclusive. It's on the Nintendo system. It's a great game. I'm recently playing this again on my GameCube, my old GameCube system, because Nintendo hasn't brought it to Nintendo Switch Online yet. Maybe they do. I want to play it with that Pro Controller. But let's get into games that feel exclusive, but really aren't exclusive. And the first one is going to be one that just feels like an Xbox game, even though it is on the PlayStation. That is the game Mass Effect. This game came out originally on the Xbox 360, partly because the Xbox 360 came out before the PlayStation 3, and partly because the PlayStation 3 came out after the Xbox 360. I have no idea what I just said there, but you get the idea. This game was developed and marketed and hyped up as being the next generation RPG, and everything and anything that we saw screamed Xbox, Xbox 360. When the game came out, it demonstrated that you were in a next generation. It took advantage of all of the oomph that the Xbox 360 had, that the last system didn't have, and it was just an incredible experience. Years later, it came out on the PlayStation 3. All of the games are on the PlayStation at this point, but it still feels like an Xbox game. It just feels like it, it belongs on the Xbox. I don't know why that is. That's why I'm making this video because sometimes games just feel like they belong on systems because they came out there first or because they were marketed there first. I don't know what it is, but this game definitely feels like an Xbox game. Next up is a big one, and it is the original Gears of War. All around me are familiar places, worn out faces, worn out places. Do you remember that ad? Do you remember how excited everyone was for this game? It was the quintessential Xbox game, but this game came to the PC. Oh my God, we're talking about the PC. I didn't know this came to the PC. I was playing it on my Xbox. No clue that this game was on the PC and it had all those mods and it had all those superior 4Kers and FPSs and stuff like that. It was an Xbox game. It didn't matter to me that it was somewhere else, especially the PC, because like I said, as console gamers, we don't even think about the PC, but this game, just screams Xbox. Reading about it, hearing about it, dreaming about it, this was the game that put Xbox 360 on the map. It is still incredible to this day. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show Dom sacrificing himself here. I never quite got over that. But this is a game, even though, again, let's stress, it was on other things. It appeared on other platforms. And I just feel like, this will always be an Xbox game, even if you can sit on a toilet with your phone and kind of try and play the game with your thumbs on that little screen. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's still an Xbox game. The next game is a big one, and it is a great example of a game that is on other platforms and other consoles, but still feels like 
and exclusive. That game is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Let me tell you, there was nothing like the lead up to this game. This was going to be the game. This was going to be the game that demonstrated the superior graphical performance of the PlayStation 2, the greatest graphics in the world, the Emotion Engine. It was a supercomputer. It was a lot of hype, but this game demonstrated that leap between the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2. It took advantage of that system. Everyone waited for it. It was even included in a demo with the full game Zone of the Enders, which by the way was a really good game, but this game feels like a PlayStation game, even though the superior version of it, Metal Gear Solid 2 Subsistence, came to the Xbox, it still feels like a PlayStation game, even to this day, even if new variations in each of the titles, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, they both appear on the Xbox, they both look better on the Xbox. In fact, it's the only system that you can play these games natively on right now, which is incredibly odd, as they were huge PlayStation games in the past. But still, I feel like this game just says PlayStation to me. Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1 actually took advantage of the pressure sensitive buttons on the PlayStation controller. That's how tied into the PlayStation hardware the game was. And the sequel was just marketed so heavily and it came out at around the time that the PlayStation 2 was coming into its own. This will always feel like a PlayStation franchise, no matter where, no matter what it ends up on. It is quintessentially a PlayStation game. The next game was a big one, and it appeared on the Saturn, it appeared on the PlayStation 1, and it's appeared on multiple systems since then, but it is a PlayStation game to me, and that is Tomb Raider. Lara Croft was never as big as when she came to the PlayStation 1. It ushered in that 3D era, and we haven't seen a proper character and icon like this before. It was absolutely huge. It introduced this action adventure hero fantasy. It had puzzles, it had all that action, all that exploration, albeit a bit rough during the PlayStation 1 days, but it came to revolutionize. It came to stand for this push into 3D, and it was really one of those first huge, huge icons that everyone knew about, even people who weren't into video games. And no matter where this game ends, up, it still feels like it belongs on a PlayStation console, even though it's a multi-plot. Again, really strange relationship between games and systems, and you can play this anywhere. In fact, it's really big on the PlayStation, it's really big on the Xbox now. Xbox had a year exclusive of Tomb Raider, and it still feels like a PlayStation game to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does it feel that way to you? It's strange, isn't it all these games that sort of feel like they belong on certain systems? This is another one that feels like it just belongs on the PlayStation. I wanna end with a big one. This may be the best example of a game that is multi-platform, but just feels like it belongs to a certain system. When this game came out, it set the gaming world on fire. We had never seen anything like this, a setting like this, a story like this, graphics and gameplay that screamed we were in a new generation. That game is Bioshock. Another game that benefited from coming out first on the Xbox 360 because the Xbox 360 came out before the PlayStation 3. Another game that benefited from the Xbox 360 just being easier to develop for than the PlayStation 3 and that cell processor. This game just introduced us, like I said, to a world we hadn't seen before. Gameplay, story, characters. It was just an incredible, incredible experience. And eventually the game was ported to the PlayStation 3. Of course, the game came to the PC, but every single time I see this game, every single time I play this game, it just feels like an Xbox game. It had that identifying factor again, like Gears of War did going to PC, eventually Gears did, but it didn't matter. Bioshock went to PlayStation 3, PC, it didn't matter. The experience that we all had as 
best console gamers was on that Xbox 360. Cliff Blazinski talking about it, talking about convincing Microsoft to add more RAM to the Xbox 360. This game was absolutely incredible. And it's still to this day, even if they announce a new one, it's one of those games that I just have to play on an Xbox. It's a weird relationship. This video wanted to highlight games that are multi-platform but still feel like exclusives. It's a weird, weird topic, a weird relationship, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Let me know some games that I didn't mention that just feel like they belong on PlayStation or they belong on Xbox. It's just one of those things I thought was interesting. I hope you liked this video. By the way, would you kindly hit the like button and subscribe? If you don't get that reference, I'm taking your gamer card away. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.